Former Congressman and Attorney General Jeff Landry becomes the 57th governor of Louisiana. He mirrors the state's strong tilt toward Republican politics, pro-life, tough on crime, an ally of oil and gas. And uh, some thoughts now on his time in office and some opportunities he has from Fox 8 political analyst Mike Sherman. Those, to you. those ceremonies moved up a day because of that trio <laughs> of storms. I've been asked this several times. No, he didn't take office early. That was still yesterday. He just had the ceremony, had the ceremony. Little, ceremony early. He comes to office with enormous advantages, beginning with a, a super majority of Republicans in both houses. Super majorities, not just majorities. So whatever legislation Jeff Landry can agree upon with the Republican majority, they can get done. Even taxing measures that require super majorities Democrats have no ability to block it. Well, and, and Mike, I mean, I think back, you know, Edwin Edwards in the 80s and the 70s had, especially in the 80s, had super majorities, but a lot of those people with D's behind their names were really Republicans and became Republicans. I don't think we've ever seen a governor in Louisiana come to power this in this strong of a position with the legislature because you're right, it's not just about party affiliation, it's about ideological affiliation. He has majorities that agree with his ideology and are part of his political party. And, and look, this is not easy stuff. And it, yeah. is, it is difficult to balance all the, these personalities are accomplished people, business leaders that are in the, somebody who's a backbencher in the legislature might be a pretty accomplished guy. But at the same time, you know, he, he is in a, a situation where there's, there's, I think, the first time in 40 years that you don't have a governor who's coming in with the state hemorrhaging money. Boy, he has been given the gift of money, a multi-billion dollar surplus coming into office. There is no budget problem to be solved. He can make investments into things he believes in that his caucus agrees with, or he can have some modest tax cuts. For example, that extra .45 of the penny that we've been paying, the budget stabilization penny, that can go away. But that's a critical choice he's going to have to make. Does he want the money to reinvest in the state to accomplish his objectives? Or does he want to cut taxes? The easy starting point being that half penny. What, what, and, you would, and he hasn't said. He's talked to, in a, he wrote an article for the Times Pick You and .com in which he said his team had identified 14 areas of immediate need. Yeah. But didn't mention what they, what, what they were yet, kind of saving his, his powder, if you will. But the, it, the, the, the tax part of it, he's, yeah. he's anti-income tax. I mean, those, that's where it kind of gets dicey in terms of those decisions you make. It sure does. Listen. We're going to have a special session pretty soon. Uh, 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 the first one's going to be on redistricting, but we, we expect one on crime and safety. We expect him to want to increase funding for prisons and police. Uh, there's a cautionary tale here from Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal came into office. He reversed the Steli plan, if folks remember that, which led to a stable, balanced budget. And he created years of epic budget shortfalls, cutting universities, cutting hospitals. So Jeff Landry's gonna have a very, Governor Landry's gonna have a difficult choice here. Does he try to start phasing out income tax, phase out that half penny, or does he invest in priorities, those 14 priorities that he truly believes or in? Or does he have some wiggle room in the middle? We'll, we'll see, and that could depend on the economy and other points. All right, Mike Sherman, thanks as always. Yeah, one positive note, it's been a very inclusive transition, very inclusive early few days of the Landry administration. Which, which has kind of been the surprise a lot of people. It, it's the surprise that he is reaching across party lines. He may even in his first special session add a second uh, a black majority Supreme Court district. All right, we shall see. Mike Sherman, thanks.